300,000 people by the River Clyde, a great host to welcome Her Majesty the Queen for the launching of Britain's new Mistress of the Sea. Though accompanied by her two daughters, this day our Queen seems strangely alone, lacking for the first time on any big occasion the escort of His Majesty. Grave affairs have kept the King in London. Nonetheless, there must have been comfort in the cheers of those who assembled for the launching of the world's largest passenger ship. Before the actual ceremony, our Queen spoke. A wonderful message, bravely delivered, in a time when we all need words of hope and encouragement. I thank you for the kind words of your address. The King has asked me to assure you of the deep regret he feels at finding himself compelled at the last moment to cancel his journey to Clyde Bank for the launching of the new liner. This ceremony, to which many thousands have looked forward so eagerly, must now take place in circumstances far different from those for which they had hoped. I have, however, a message for you from the King. He bids the people of this country to be of good cheer, in spite of the dark clouds hanging over them, and indeed over the whole world. He knows well that, as ever before in critical times, they will keep cool heads and brave hearts. He knows too that they will place entire confidence in their leaders, who under God's providence, are striving their utmost to find a just and peaceful solution of the grave problems which confront them. The very sight of this great ship brings home to us how essential it is for the welfare of man that the arts of peaceful industry should continue. Arts in the promotion of which Scotland has long held a leading place. The city of Glasgow has been for Scotland the principal doorway opening upon the world. The narrow waters of the Clyde have been the cradle of a large part of Britain's mercantile marine. So it is right that from here should come our foremost achievements in that connection the greatest of the ships that ply to and fro across the Atlantic, like shuttles in a mighty loom, weaving a fabric of friendship and understanding between the people of Britain and the people of the United States. It is, it is altogether fitting that the noblest vessel ever built in Britain <laughs> and built with the help of her government and people should be dedicated to this service. I am happy to think that our two nations are today more closely linked than ever before by a common tradition of freedom and a common faith. While thoughts like these are passing through our minds, we do not forget the men who brought this great ship into being. For them, she must ever be a source of pride and credit, and I'm sure affection. I congratulate them warmly on the fruits of their labors. The launching of a ship is like the inception of all great human enterprises, an act of faith. We cannot foretell the future, but in preparing for it, we show our trust in a divine providence and in ourselves. We proclaim our belief that by the grace of God and by man's patience and goodwill, order may yet be brought out of confusion and peace out of turmoil. With that hope and prayer in our hearts, we send forth upon her mission this noble ship. <coughs> Thank
graciously permitting me, ma'am, to present you with this small souvenir of the occasion. A casket made in the reign of the first Queen Elizabeth and containing an album of photographs of the progress of the vessel. Thank you. 